All right, slightly reworking the name. Tate, you eventually find a tavern. It is named Frisky Lemur's Tavern. What? And it looks what? like a lemur, like it's a mascot or whatever, is a lemur. And it's doing a winky face and the point fingers. <laughs> well. It's a little strange, but I can get down with that. All right, you uh, go into the bar. Um, what, what do you order, Tate? Something strong, something weak, something in the middle, a simple ale, a shot of whiskey, a glass of whiskey. More Everclear. Everclear. Um... Probably something light for the night. I mean, if I'm going to be here, I'm going to be drinking here lightly, because I'm here for business. Here for business? Yep. You're going to try to sell your medical goop? No, I'm here for testing businesses. Are you trying to be like a spokesperson for medical goop? Yes. Legalization. All right. Uh, <laughs> legalization for medieval uh, morphine. Essentially. Well, it the one you want, which is Fox, and legalization of morphine and cannabis infused morphine. A little bit, kind of. Okay. Mmm. Uh, THC. Where. Where do you want to go in the bar? Do you want to go to the bar, or do you want to go to a table? There are people at tables, including, but probably, not limited to, the many different races. Probably a table that doesn't have anybody at it yet, if I can find one. Uh, sure, you're able to find a smaller table. Because we gotta do this... Subtly. There's a train. At least it isn't a child. Channel train? Oh, no, Calv, I don't want a pal. You could do that. I want a different one. <laughs> Calm down, Tane, Jesus. What the I hell happened? What did I What the hell happened? I was at a different page. KDK bot's really good. Okay, well, anyway. Uh, okay, Tate, you go to a small table. You get yourself a simple ale. And you start to drink away. What do you do from there? Well, I'm just going to kind of sip at it and maybe have some people... See if anybody's going to sit down where near me. If not, I'll start possibly waving at people. See if they sit down. All right. Well, uh, after, oh, we'll say half an hour or so goes by, the bar starts to fill up a little bit more. You now have a collection of dwarves at one table, clearly from the mines, that uh, had come in this far out of the city, maybe to do something. Who knows? And uh, maybe this is just their favorite bar across the whole city. Nevertheless, some miners are at a table. You have some elves that are at another table, and it looks like they're playing some sort of card game. Uh, you've got a couple of different tables with a collection of humans. And then you have one table where there is a big brawly human, a, a female elf, and then a uh, dragonborn. And they are around a table that happens to have an orc, or a half-orc, and a dwarf. And those two are having a drink-off.
No Alrighty. one is going over to you, though. I'm gonna go sit by the doors. Distracted by Katie Kbot. Yep. Let's not get too distracted, Tate. I'm, I'm all good now that I have my own stuff. Anyway, I'm gonna sit next to the doors. Hi! The, uh, as you walk over, you hear them just talking about the day's work. How much material they found, or how far in they were able to chisel away, or what have you. And when you sit down at their table or near their table. Say, at or near? Sorry, Marcus. Tate? Yes? At, I'm being blown away. At or near? This is your last chance, otherwise I'm going to say that everything you want to do doesn't matter. Table. Okay, that was your last chance. I you don't pay attention again, I'm just going to say it fails. Whatever you want to do, and you just had a night of drinking. Alright, I guess it's at the table. Okay. Hi! You sit down, you say hi. As you sit down and they look at you and for a second they're kind of like, what the fuck? But are very quickly to go, hi, can we help you? Oh yeah, uh, I was, I saw you guys over here, I recognize you from the mine. Um, have you found anything cool from that area we helped out with, the area that was closed off? They look confused at each other and go, Uh, you might have been working in one of the other mines. You do know there's one more, th there's more than one mine in the mining district, right? Uh, actually I did not. I don't know much about the culture of the mining area. They look at each other for a second, in unison, take a big swig. And then let, let out a boisterous laugh and go, Well, it's time for you to learn, little lass. And they start to tell you about how to mine, and how you search for veins, how you can test rocks by licking them, listening to them, and so forth. At the mention of testing rocks, um... I do have, actually, I came over here for something else, but now that you mentioned testing Little rocks... Little Duane isn't on you. you Little Duane's not on me? No, you've been leaving... You. Last time you interacted... I thought he with teleports Little... to me. No, he does not teleport to you. Damn it. Okay. Well, I might have questions for you later, but for now, I may have something real nice to maybe help you guys mine better. They look, they wait, kind of like, okay. You see, I, I know a friend of mine, and he's got some great medical goop, I would call it. But beyond that, it's also a performance enhancing goop. If you ever get any aches in your muscles from a long day of mining or anything like that, it's pretty much guaranteed to help solve that. They sit and go, okay, proceed. How exactly would we use it? It's generally a salve. Uh, you just apply it to the area that's burning or hurting and let it do its work. Have you ever Fall tried up. to eat it? I have not tried to eat it myself, uh, although I might not recommend it. It might give you some uh, visions in those tunnels. Visions? Is it some sort of drug? Well, more of a medical apothecary in style. It's only a drug in the fact that, well... 
it just heals and helps. I mean, it's it's not a spell. It's more of a natural ointment. Keep in mind, Tate, I don't think you've ever used it. I know. He has once. But I need test subjects, so... He tried the green. He never tried any of the others. I That's haven't true. yet. <laughs> I haven't had the need to, so I need test subjects. Well, tell you what, my shoulder is a little achy today. My shoulders. Uh, why don't you slap a little bit onto your hands and come over here and rub my shoulders with the goop? I'll, I'll see how well this actually works. She is pretty much okay with that. I mean, she is a ranger and all, so applying medicinal stuff is kind of necessary. So, night, IGG. I have my mic open for that. We know. So you give him the shoulder massage with the medical goop? Yes, I'm going to choose... Hold on. Oh, I got a couple to choose from. Yeah, you have green, red, and glowy blue. That's kind of a horrifying last one. Last one made with real radiation? Not radiation. <laughs> just uranium. That has radiation. <laughs> Wait, not better. Well, shit. So I've tried the red one. I haven't tried the green one. Or the no, blue one. No, you haven't one. tried... You've tried the green one. You haven't tried the red one. The red one is the enhancer, and the blue one is the uh, improved enhancer with uh, the fox, fox nip. nip. That one's for herself. There's also it's not actually the mysterious fox nip. plant it's mush. Just, it's just animal nip, but still. I still have the mysterious plant mush too. Well, I don't know what plant mush is. I don't know either. Maybe that was the blue stuff. I'm thinking it was the stuff that got put in the blue stuff. That or it was originally the green goop. I am going to try the red stuff then. All right. You put green gel or uh, red gel onto your hands and you start to massage his shoulders. Can you do a fort save for me, Tate? Yes. I don't have any gloves. That's right. Let's test this skin contact ointment on other people. First step, apply to my skin. Eight. All right, you and he both become affected by the goop. Uh, your hands and technically his shoulders and back, just all the aches start to fade away. And... Uh, Eventually, you feel stronger in the relative sense of this would be a plus one to your strength. 
temporary. But since you're not doing anything that's going to demand it, it doesn't really matter. Not plus one to the ability modifier, a plus one to the ability. Nice. And uh, a little bit while longer, it starts to fade away. Roll me a will save. Okay. Just adjusting some stuff in my settings of it. Eighteen. All right. Oh, sorry. Uh, all right. So as it begins to wear off, you don't really feel the need to put more on. Um, but you can feel the goop starting to no longer be there. And he's, he's feeling pretty well relaxed and pretty good. Uh, then he yells up to the bartender. Bartender! One round of... I don't know. One round of... Uh... Dwarven Ale. Sure. One round of Dwarven Ale for the table. The bar winch brings over a Dwarven Ale for each Dwarf and you. That's good. Do I will be drink? drinking it. Hell yeah. Roll four. Dwarven Ale is different than Ale. Twenty-three. I see it floating on its side. It does that a lot. You usually just tell us to uh, go Can by what it what it uh, has when you roll over it. Yeah, it was on a twenty when you rolled over it. Fair enough. Uh, I need you to actually make three rolls, though. <laughs> God damn it, Marcus! I know. I just really wanted you to take one sip and get knocked unconscious. Eight. I'm sorry, that's going to be eight rolls. I know, right? Uh, make it 12. Make it Still 32. Still full 20 rolls. Passes every one of them. You gotta... What the fuck? Take three rolls. So a 20, a 5... A 20 and 8... Well, a 23 and 8... And a 7. The after effects hit me hard. Give me one second. So distracted. No. I like Kapow, by the way, from uh, Gobot. God, Cal, you're just so hung up on Cobot. Jesus. Any question? All right. Coffee milkshake. Uh, you start to drink it with all of them. I should probably roll how well they take their own drink. Huh. 
Uh, you start to drink with all of them, and uh, you seem to be doing way better than the rest of them as they are drinking. You're probably pretty sure they've been drinking harder stuff all night, as in they've been only drinking dwarven ale and not some basic human or elven Mead, wine. Essentially. And, uh... About halfway in, give or take, you're starting to feel the effects. Uh, your face is a little warm. Your body is a little, not numb, but comfortable. And you're thinking a little slower. By the time you get done with the drink... Pretty close to when they get done with it, actually. You're probably a little proud of yourself for being able to keep up with these dwarves. One of them yells over to the bartender, Bartender! Another round for the table! And then the one <laughs> that you rub the shoulders on looks at you and goes, So, what are you doing after the bar? You are not pissed drunk yet, Tate, but you are intoxicated. Yeah. Another round comes to the table. Well, I'm going to be heading back to the guild house. I've got places to be tomorrow. My, my guild house. Which I should be going, but if you guys ever need any more, just uh, stop by the main guild house and ask where our guild house is. They can give you directions. I'm not sure exactly where it is right now myself. The barmaid brings over another round for the table, and they all take another drink, and then the one that uh, you rubbed his shoulders goes, Oh, come on, one more drink with us. Hey, who knows, maybe we'll keep having a fun night. Roll me a sense motive if you want to disagree with him, since you're a bit intoxicated. I don't think I have a sense motive. I should really. You do. Your sense motive is your wisdom modifier. Wisdom modifier. Plus two then, so 14. He beats you by three. Um, it's, he's making a really good idea. Why not stay and have some more fun with these guys? Marcus, I would like to apply more medical goop. Okay. Some of huh. the blue stuff to myself, just to try it out. Where are you putting it? I, I'm, I'm gonna be like, I've got one more thing to try. Since, since we're gonna have a fun night anyway, just keep in mind, this, I, this might I, help. You have, just keep in mind, you only have a limited amount of this stuff. So I know, I've only got one. Track. But I can always get more. Hopefully. And I'm gonna Not, try this but, stuff. Yeah, I, Tate, you're, basically the ingredients that he needs you to go find for him is essentially just weed. Not really, but in a sense. Like, you're going out and finding psychedelic plants. I know. I'm fine with that. I mean, it, yeah. <laughs> well, it's calling it psychedelic isn't exactly proper. It's not true. It, anyway, I don't want to get into any of that Elbow. stuff. That's fine. I just figure we're going to have a fun night anyway. Might as well enhance it. Right. Uh, roll me a fort. And I am applying it probably to my arms. Kind of like lotion or perfume or something. I don't know. I gotta try it out too. Fifteen. Alright. Uh, although, that's for the... That role. Before you apply to yourself, he takes a drink, sees you pulled out, and goes, You want me to... To rub you with it? 
Oh no no, oh, I'm baby. fine. Oh come on, Tate. Don't be a wet blanket. Exactly. <laughs> Give in to the peer pressure, Tate. <laughs> well, Tate, you only a sense motive. Oh, 22. you beat. Yep, right, you beat him. You beat him. Uh, so he goes. Okay, I just thought I'd return the favor. Upon putting the stuff on your skin, though, I want you to make me another fort save as you drink your ale. I'm gonna warn you now. You, your character technically has minuses. Roll again. I don't 11, 12, 9. All right. Uh, for all intents and purposes, you black out and we're skipping over to the other people. Kay. Lamb. Oh, hi, Jared. Hi. Zephyr and Perthros are in the library reading. And... Uh, Lamb... Did Perthros ever learn the whole copying over book thing? I know that Reem learned it from Zephyr, but I don't know if anyone I, else has. I don't think so. Not All from right. not from memory. Well, Zephyr is in the same room, whether you are sitting next to him or not. You do eventually notice that what he is doing while reading the books is he's putting the books page to page on top of each other. What? The, what the hell is that doing? It's eating them. Transcribing. That's so I can look the information up later yep. if I need to. When did you learn about this? Pretty early on, I think. Oh, how do you do that? I, I, I would. <laughs> it might be a good idea to know. Just need to um, open up the book you want to copy over to the beginning. Write down transcribe in your book and then lay it down on top of it. Okay. Uh, uh, I will it'll, then it'll take try that a while, the, uh, depending on the length of the book, but and you won't be able to take them apart during that, but it's pretty useful. Book sex, goddammit. Um, I'll do that with the journal. Alright. Uh, you write transcribe into your book. You put the book on top of your journal. And, much like he said, you cannot pull the books apart. Well, that's going to be handy later, hopefully. How long have you been at this? Taking a quick count of what I've got in my book. You're doing that in, in real life there, Jared? Yeah. Well, I've got like about probably about 20 books in here, and including the uh, two volumes of Guild Law that we have sitting back at the uh, at our guild hall. Nice. That's actually probably a thing I should do later then. Any other amazing functions you've figured out with this thing? Not really, but I haven't tried much. That's fair. I've been focused on my rod. Maybe I should rephrase that. <laughs> I thought the same thing. <laughs> I've been focused on learning. Yeah, I've been focused on my d <laughs> Anyway, uh, after the books are done transcribing, Lamb, how long do you stay there? And Zephyr, how long do you stay there? About what time was it when we came down to the library versus now? Oh, it is 
definitely nighttime, and you are definitely tired. Oh yeah. No, uh, in terms of what point. time, I, I mean, I don't. The moon is up. So long as it doesn't need to be specific, but you'll, yeah, you'll in, in that case, so yeah, I'll probably be going to sleep. Right, you'll get eight hours sleep. You'll probably be asleep for a little longer than the others, but still. I should probably get going at this point. I think if I stay any longer, I'm going to pass out in this chair. And I don't think the guild would be too uh, happy with that. Yeah, the whole need to sleep thing seems inconvenient. Just a bit. It's necessity. That's why he said need to sleep thing. So you head on off towards the guild hall? Mm-hmm. And what about Zephyr there? Jared, what does he do? I'll probably stay for like a another half hour skimming through the book before heading back to the guild hall. All right. Uh, back at the guild hall then before either of these two arrive. Um, Kelb, after you put your stuff away that you've had in your backpack and whatnot, or attached to your backpack, um, what does Arim do after putting his stuff away? It's late at night, yeah? Yeah, you're probably gonna want to go to sleep. Alright. And Noah, after he makes a good amount of progress on the puzzle box maybe he's going to want to touch it up a little bit later but for now is uh, your character also going to go to sleep I'm going to set the puzzle box on the uh, table right near the entrance okay and then I'm going to go to sleep puzzle box is shuffled by the way is that your bed? That one? Yep, I asked correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you go on up, go to bed. Lamb, when Perthros returns, what does he do? He's going straight to sleep. Is this the right bed? He doesn't really care. Okay. And, uh, this is the guy who accidentally slept in Noah's bed and got tied yeah, down and this, stayed asleep, this is Marcus. True. That's true. This is true. And uh, Jared, Zephyr comes in. Where is he? Actually, uh, I head out the door of the uh, the other guild hall. I'm going to talk to Clara for a second. Okay. So you stop at Clara's desk. Um, Quick question. Have you seen many books by an author with the initials GZ? GZ, Jesus. Okay, my mind went completely different direction. Godzilla. No. Jizz. Eh. I can't remember what the G is. Oh, anyway, uh. She takes a second, leans back, thinks to herself, and goes, Not that I can recall. Uh, I mean, most authors tend to put their full name down. Or if it's a journal, uh, somewhere in there has their full name, but specifically just the letter G and the letter Z? Not that I can remember. Yeah, that's kind of why I was asking, because the whole initial thing seemed weird. Maybe the author wanted his name to be secret. Or her name. Oh well, thanks. And then I head back to our guild hall. Okay. Uh, once you get back, where do you go in there? I am going to head up to the couch, and then I notice a puzzle box on the table. And I sit down next to it. 
Okay. It is a puzzle box. Uh, Noah, the puzzle box? Does it have any, like, symbols, or what... What exactly is the the different pieces on it to be a puzzle? It's essentially the outside of it is a slide and twist puzzle. Where you can pull and move a piece within a full 360 and then push back into where it was. And there's a certain mechanism you have to do in a specific order to open it. And there is a few things in it at the moment. Is there any symbols on it? Or is it purely based on... On, uh... A, like, a pattern? Or does it actually have, like... Anything to show where the top is, or so forth? Uh, nothing that defines top, bottom, left, or right. But each piece that can be moved in maneuvers is engraved with either the flowing of wind, the waves of water, the random fire markings of just kind of like how a campfire would taper off, or one that just has slight improvements in it of ovals. So, Earth? Yeah. What about the other two sides? Nerd! The other two sides are left blank at the moment. Alright. Oh, I thought maybe you were going to go with like the, the positive and negative plane or something. I was um, thinking sun and moon, but... Kind of the same thing in a sense. For magic and whatnot. But anyway. Uh... Alright, so yeah. Jared, if you take notice, that's what you see. You see symbols that you would assume, you know, fire, water, wind, and then circles, which I'm going to take it that your character would probably figure out, based on the theme, that might be Earth. Okay, I'm going to mess about with the mechanisms for probably about an hour. So you're going to try solving it? Yeah. Alright. Roll me a d100. God damn it, Cal. 97. <laughs> okay. Uh, you mess with it for a while, but... In the end, you don't solve it. I don't. I don't want to try looking up what the difficulty and everything else on this is. I was just gonna say if you got a hundred, you were gonna get it. But okay, you you try solving it for a while, and in the end, whoever made it seems to have taken their time, and it's at, it's very nicely made. Uh, although you couldn't solve it, you can at least appreciate it. After that, I'll set it back where it was, and then head up to the couch and start reading through the book. Um, okay. So you're reading your personalized book? Yep. Okay. Uh, as I bring that up, Lamb, what's your character dreaming about? Probably the same thing as last time. He just wants to, like, be back home, like, living a not completely magic-tastical life. That's not what he fucking wanted for himself. Uh, by, the, by the way, Marcus is a uh, DC of 25 on Ant. It's also dependent, though, to Moise on quality and everything else. And yeah, on a 21, that. I'd have to look up specifically how well he made it, but that might technically be Mastercraft. 
Okay. Well, I, I just for such a simple up, object. Arc, I just put. I just looked up arcane puzzle box. That saw I was able to find. Well, it's not arcane. That's the thing. Yeah. True. That's the only one I was able to find, though. <laughs> and it'd probably be yeah. more like a disabled device. Yeah. True. Okay, uh, where were we? That's where we were. Um, so you sit back down and you start reading the book, and it goes into two or three adventures uh, when he was a teenager. And I want to say you were halfway through that chapter and you finished this chapter. The all in all within that part of it, uh, I'll ask you, what kind of adventures do you think this young man would get into? Wouldn't be anything too elaborate, but do you think he'd be... Do you think an interesting read would be that he explored giant ruins? Trees. Or Probably explored... uh, um, early on, they'd be mostly just scavenging ruins for uh, either useful tools or things to sell. Okay. Uh, the first part of it is, the first big adventure is they go into a ruin and they adventure around and they find interesting broken down items. Most of the stuff seems rather odd. Uh, it uses words you don't recognize, but seem familiar. And it uses descriptions that seem out of place. Then the next adventure part of it is they had heard of someone who is a big ruin diver and seems to be going after almost specific pieces marcus and what is his name indiana jones no this isn't any kind of reference that you would notate trust me it's not um and then the last part of it uh is once again just ruins, but also looking out for the guy. The next part of it is while the two young men, whom are no longer teenagers, but are now young men, uh, I guess technically still teenagers in the sense of they're like 18 or so, you would assume by this point, they are scavenging ruins now looking for specific pieces themselves, again, that you really don't recognize, um, other than a select few items that seem odd that you'd be looking for it. And uh, they see the man. And he seems to have found what they describe as a crystal matrix. And he lets out a laugh and says, finally, my plan can begin. And the two of them look at each other, or the book tells you that the two of them look at each other. And the friend of the main character tells him, I've heard of that. That used to be used for weapons. What kind of plan would he have if he's trying to create a weapon near our peaceful village? Let's go check it out. And the two of them follow behind. And while following behind him, they see him come across what appears to be just some peaceful, happy-go-lucky little outcropping or or uh, clearing inside of the woods and there's some like happy little bunnies and he pulls out a bomb blows them up laughs to himself and says stupid life 
are stupid little critters and keeps on going clearly having in their words no care in the world for life And he does this multiple times. And pretty much any time you see something alive, he tries killing it. Not for food, not for fur, just to kill it. Just because. And that's where you can't read anymore. Once again, you get a headache. Noah, does your character have any interesting dream? No, the only thing on his mind is that puzzle box. Alright, he's dreaming that uh, he forgot his pu his uh, puzzle box solution. Demois, does your guy have any interesting dreams? Um, not that I can think of, really. Unless there's like something that you want me to dream, like a premonition or something like that. Nope. Uh, he dreams of himself drinking tea. That's fine. Kel, what about you? Anything interesting? Alright. He just has uh, a dream about finding some sort of head-sized ruby. We're talking or watermelon-sized ruby. Stereotyping We're talking dwarves. massive gem. Huh? Stereotyping dwarves. And inside of the ruby is fire. It's a fire ruby. Thing in D and D. I that, don't know, but that it's red a dream. ruby is worth ten. Anyway, uh, <laughs> morning comes by and you guys wake up. Lamb, you're going to wake up a little bit later than the others. Uh. Demois, Kel, Noah, Jared, all of you are awake. Yeah. That was a nice sleep. Um, sunrise. You think you have about an hour before he's going to open his shop, so enough time to eat before you head out. I'll go downstairs to eat and see what everyone else is into today. I'm also going to go downstairs and I'm going to grab the plate of bacon and bring it out. All right, Jared. While you're on your uh, couch, you notice that those three guys have headed downstairs. Does Zephyr stay on the couch, or is he gonna head down? He's gonna stay on the couch for a bit longer. Okay. Uh, after a little while, eventually, Perthros, you wake up. At which point I'm gonna go downstairs. So, um, why, what are y'all's plans for today? And by the way, seeing the um, we did make the money with for the book. Um. Was there anything that we needed the money for? Kelb, this is new news to you. Areem didn't know you guys got paid from Octominos for bringing the book to him. So you probably have no idea what the hell Samael is talking about. However. Yeah, uh, well, uh... Um, it dawns on you, Demois. It dawns on Samael that Perthros was not there when you got when you guys got paid. Uh, yeah, when it asked yeah, him. I, yes, I was! I figured. <laughs> or, 
a ring, not Perthro, sorry, a ring. <laughs> I do what you meant. Um, oh, yeah, um, when, uh, we, when, when we brought the book to, uh, Augmentus, um, Perthros handed it to him, and he decided to hold on to it for us, and he gave us, um, he gave us 2,000 gold, um, for our trouble. For that book? Yeah. Well, um... Bit odd. Forge I was looking to get also happens to cost that much. Augmentus is very strange. Possibly he knew that. It also dawns on you that, uh, since he wasn't in the room to know about getting paid, and he seems to think it's odd that 2,000 gold would be paid for a book, you realize maybe he doesn't realize what the book was. Or did. Alright, um... I was well, going in the... mining the fucking rock while the, those guys dealt with the book. <laughs> yeah. Right, so, to him, all he knows is you guys had a book that summoned a chocolate monster, and a monstrous duck and bunny... And well, you got paid um, two thousand gold for it. Well, well, um, let me elaborate. The reason that he gave us um, so much money for the book is it seems to be a very um, powerful magical book that is sort of um, a tale of tales that accounts of every fight of seemingly the same fight over and over again, and tells how each one countered what we faced and we felt that was best in his hands that no one else would have to fight um said creatures again and he seemed to be thrilled to want to read about the encounters track marcus during our six days of absence from traveling there fighting and coming back did the mushroom ever get taken off our uh place here and why not? Oh, uh, yeah. The guy had his men come and uh, acquire it for the purposes that you asked. But, but yeah, that's what he offered to us. Um, I mean, let's seeing that we all participated um, in the fight, I would like for us to definitely come in agreement of what we should spend the money on. Um, I'm not too sure where Avena or um, Avena is, but Zephyr's upstairs if you want to grab him and we can discuss what we should spend the money on. Because I'm the nice person not keeping the money for myself. <laughs> That's how I character. Oh, I am. I am lawfully good, so. Sure, I'll head up and grab him. Alright. Didn't want to come up with any work, whatever. Um, <clears throat> I'm proceeding to go up the stairs and uh, it's Zephyr. Yep. Down to uh, join us to talk about the gold that you guys got for the book. See what you uh, spend it on, whatnot. Okay. Just kind of need to tally up what all we got. Because we're. Yeah. Down then. Okay. You wouldn't happen to know anything about, uh, like, a, a crystal formation used to make weapons, would you? Chris? Uh, no, that sounds crazy. I mean, I'm a dwarf, Mark. <laughs> 
too crazy, yeah, but... Like, a crystal weapon in and of itself, you could think, maybe... And then there's ideas that you can enchant a crystal with magic to be imbued into the weapon. So this way the weapon itself doesn't have a magical uh, effect on it, but it gains it from that, so it's kind of like an ability slot or some shit. But like some sort of magical I or some sort of crystal that in and of itself is used for making weapons? No, only as a material. Ah, uh, no crystal sword from Diablo 2. <laughs> no, that's what I mean, like, a material. But not like it's literally for the formation of weapons. That's what the crystal sword is, though. Is the entire blade is the crystal. No, yeah, right, that's what I mean. Maybe someone could make a crystal blade, or a crystal to go into a blade to give it a temporary magic. Not as an actual thing, not like a material. Like, the crystal makes weapons. Oh. Like, magically. Like right, you, like... Magically makes weapons. You would put the crystal in sort of, some sort of magitech, and then the crystal spawns a dagger. The printers. Oh, wait. Yeah, pretty much. I tried to printer with crystals. Uh, no, can't say that I do. I mean, I've heard of you using crystals within weapons for, like, design purposes, but no. Oh. Hmm, okay. And then I follow him downstairs. Ah, minutes, there you... Way, if you guys wanted to talk... About something while we were up there. Uh, I figured it'd just be like basic chit chat, like where Avin where is Lavina, stuff like that. Well, funny that said, as the, those two come down, and we have a flash moment of you guys going, or I guess Samuel going, where do you think Avina's at? Does Perthros Sertusen want to say I have no idea or anything like that? I never heard her get back last night. Uh, what yeah, she tends to do that now. sometimes. She probably went out to get to drink or something. So, she as that, that is said, and those two are coming down the stairs, we're gonna flash over to Avina. Avina! Yes? Roll me a fort save and a will save. Eight? Sixteen. You wake up with a throbbing headache. And you feel like you're about to vom, but you hold it back. And after holding it back, you collect yourself and you realize you are in a strange bed, in a strange room. 